Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video, we're going to be taking a look at Grand Theft Auto Online back in 2013 versus the way it is now in 2017, and how the original DLCs have since changed compared to the ones we've gotten right now. So the reason I'm making this video is because it is September 17th. It is the four year anniversary of Grand Theft Auto 5. This day, four years ago, Grand Theft Auto 5 was released. I'm sure a couple hours ago, many of you guys were standing in line in front of a GameStop or a Best Buy, you know, at the midnight release, waiting for this game to come out and jumping into it for the first time. It was one of the most hyped games of all time. I think it's safe to say it lived up to the hype. But today, what we're gonna be focusing on is Grand Theft Theft Auto Online and how the DLCs in 2013 and maybe even a little bit after that compare to what they are now and the differences are shocking and I also think this video will be interesting is because I know a lot of people weren't playing around that time. Some people jumped into Grand Theft Auto 5 when the new generation consoles came out or when PC came out and might have missed those early years so this video might be a cool kind of refresher for you. All right, so let's start with the very first update to be added into online, and that was the Beach Bum DLC. So the Beach Bum update was actually one of the few sort of passive DLCs we got into the game. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but probably the biggest part about the Beach Bum update that you guys probably don't remember is that all the vehicles were free. So Rockstar added four vehicles into the game. I think it was the Dune Buggy, the Kenneth Kalahari, the Bravado Paradise Van, and then a Speeder Speedboat. And Rockstar said all four vehicles can be accessed in story mode and are available at no in-game cost. So that's two big differences right there. A lot of the vehicles we got in the online updates were also added into story mode. That's no longer the case. And they were also free. Could you imagine Rockstar doing that now, an update where all the vehicles were free? Ah, those were the days back in 2013 when we didn't have to worry about how expensive a vehicle was gonna be. It was just available for free. And as I mentioned, this is a passive DLC update for the most part. The highlights were the free vehicles and the tank tops and the board shorts and the bikinis that were available for our characters. It was a time when you would dress up and hang out on the beach not dogfight in the sky while people are trying to destroy other people's cargo. So that was the first update that was added into the game. Again, the three big changes that you'll probably notice from modern DLCs is that the content was free, it was passive, and it was added into story mode. Now there was only two other DLCs added in 2013. The one after that was the content creator, which at the time I didn't realize how big of an update that was gonna be, but the content creator now is a backbone, it's a staple of Grand Theft Auto Online. So the fact that they added that into the game was huge. And then the capture update in December, which added the capture into the game, uh, which has created some pretty cool game modes, but it brought along with it holiday gifts. So this was a temporary update that added some Christmas themed clothing, as well as our first snowfall in Grand Theft Auto Online. Although the items of clothing were removed on January 5th, of 2014. So once again, we continue to see Rockstar adding free items into the game, whether it's the capture creator or the content creator, that's obviously free. And then the holiday gifts were free too, even though they were eventually removed at a certain point in time. I still think that's a fair compromise. If you get something for free, it might only last for a little bit of time. And then we jump into the updates in 2014 and we still see a massively different style DLC than what we see right now. So in February of 2014, we had the Valentine's Day Massacre special, which added one new weapon and one new vehicle, the Roosevelt and the Gusenberg Sweeper, the business update, which added four vehicles, the Alpha, Jester, Trismo, R, and Vestra, the High Life update in May of 2014 added four vehicles, the Huntley S, the Masacro, the Zintorno, and the Thrust, and the reason I mention these updates is because look how vastly different these style of DLCs are. The highlight of these updates were the two to four vehicles that were added. Could you imagine if Rockstar added an update into the game today where all they did was include four vehicles as the highlight? The community would go absolutely nuts. They would say, Rockstar, what the heck? Four vehicles, that's it? That's no content at all. But back in the day in 2013 and 2014, we saw those four vehicles as, man, these are awesome. And another thing that's different is they were all released at the exact same time. Now, I know there's a fewer amount of vehicles, but there was no drip feeding at all, which means you got all the content on day one 
when it was added into the game. And even when there was more vehicles added, like in the next update, the I'm Not a Hipster update, where there were seven total vehicles, they were all released at once. That's more than almost what we received at on day one for the Smuggler's Run update as far as vehicles go. And that was a DLC back in 2014. And once again, all vehicles like that, like the Blade, the Rapsy, the Warner, the Dubs to 6x6, even though we had to pay for them, that only lasted for basically two or three updates, uh, they were also added into story mode as well, which means if you played single player, you could enjoy them too. Now, I think when the game started to switch and when we saw Rockstar go into the current mode of doing things right now was in early 2016 and what they've continued in 2017 with Lowriders Customs Classics. This was actually the first update to feature drip feeding vehicles. Now, at the time, it was not all that bad. So in Lowriders Customs Classics, we got three vehicles that were released on the first day. And then we had three vehicles that were tied into the drip feed. So that's not all that bad at all. 50-50 split of the content. And even with further adventures in Finance and Felony, we ended up getting 10 vehicles on day one. And then we had three vehicles after that for our drip feeding content, which is not all that bad at all. So that means you've got about 75% of the content on day one, and you're only getting about 30 to 25% of the content that's gonna be stretched out over a total period of time. However, then we start getting into the updates of late 2016 and then 2017. And this is where I think things start to take a real turn, I guess for the worse, but Grand Theft Auto Online has kind of turned itself into its own double-edged sword. So let me explain. So with updates like import-export and gun running and smuggling, we've got in 2016 and 2017 and even 2015 uh, have been way better than the ones from early 2013 and 2014. I mean, think about it. The Beach Bum update had four vehicles and two uh, weapons, whereas the last update had a full-fledged business. It had tons of new clothing, aircrafts, vehicles. If we go back to gun running, the exact same thing, but with a different theme, the updates are way more in-depth provide way more content, way more vehicles, but there is that double-edged sword. That double-edged sword is that Rockstar is using the drip feed system to increase the length of time of these updates so that they can last longer, so that they have to produce fewer, which I guess is not technically their fault as they're probably focusing on other games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and the next installment of Grand Theft Auto. And at the same rate, because of that, and because Rockstar has seen their ability to make money with online and monetize it, the prices of all the items in the game have significantly increased. I mean, I know the beach bum to smugglers run analogy is a little extreme, but when you think about it, vehicles used to be free and now they're over $6 million. So an increase like that is pretty insane, especially for someone that doesn't want to have to grind constantly, which is kind of what these updates have become, a grinding simulator just to buy the new content only to do it all over again. And really the third and final caveat that could be a result of the success of Grand Theft Auto Online inadvertently was single player getting ignored. So not only did it get ignored with new vehicles being added, but the lack of single player DLC as well. Now that's a completely separate topic for a completely separate video, but did the success of Online with its new style of updates completely kill off any chance of receiving a single player DLC? Maybe Rockstar originally had plans for it, and that's why they were originally adding the online vehicles into story mode because it would have been really cool to see a single player update that featured all the new online vehicles too. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. I would leave a source in the description, but this is just kind of me free balling off some of the Newswire articles and reading some of those. So I'll leave the Newswire in the description if you want to like check out some of the old updates and the way Rockstar used to announce things on the Newswire. It is pretty interesting and it will give you a nice little throwback nostalgia trip uh, if you want to check out the way they used to like announce things in Grand Theft Auto Online, which I definitely think is pretty Pretty cool. So let me know in the comment section down below, what sort of style of update do you like? Did you like the updates that we received in 2013 that were more simple, more passive, that featured less content, but it was also less expensive? Or are you a big fan of the way the uh, updates are done right now, where we get a ton of content, 
Most of it is saved for, you know, drip feeding, and it's also really expensive, that double-edged sword that I'm talking about. So let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you did go and enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.